Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today, we are actually going to talk about self-care. And I know it's a topic that we have talked about recently in a few episodes. Um, Today is a very special one. I have a colleague of mine here with us today, Leslie Gaudet. Did I pronounce your name right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, and we are going to talk about how self-care is not selfish. And for all of you mamas out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're wrapped up because the kids need something. And next thing you know, it is now nine o'clock. The kids have finally gone to bed. If, if you're lucky, (laughs) if you're in my house, it's a crapshoot. Um, and rather than going and, you know, taking a shower, doing something for yourself, taking five minutes just to, just to breathe and, and center back, you feel guilty for doing so, but you've just given yourself for the whole day. So we're going to go over that for those of you without kids. Trust me, you guys do this too. Work, work calls, family calls, dogs call, cat calls. It doesn't matter. It can happen to you too. So today that's what we're going to talk about is self-care. Um, I love talking with Leslie. And I think when we first, when we first talked, our conversation was supposed to be a short one and ended up quite long. And I love meeting people like that because I know hearing from her, hearing what she does, that she is in alignment with a lot of the principles that we talk about here at Healthy in a Wild World. Um, Self-care being the greatest topic that we could come together on for here. There are so many more topics we could we could go on and on probably for for months and years <laughs> at this point um but we are going to stay focused on self care today so she is she's a motivational speaker she's an international best selling author she's a self care coach for female coaches and course creators and i am so excited to introduce you to her she loves to talk prioritizing self care and having you do so so that when you wake up you feel energized there's no more dragging your butt out of bed we all do it you know it um i'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit more and then we are going to get directly into the topic and today it is all about self care it's not selfish it is essential so leslie would you please introduce yourself Yes. Well, hello. And thank you so much for having me on today. I'm excited for this, this chat because this is something that's really near and dear to me. Um, so my name is Leslie Gaudet. As you said, I am a self-care coach and I work, mostly I'm working with female coaches and course creators, but you know, women in general, we, if you wear a lot of hats, which a lot of the hats we put on ourselves, um, you wear a lot of hats, you have a lot to do in any given day. And a lot of the time you put yourself low on the totem pole, sometimes not at all. And it's really essential that you take care of yourself. Because I truly believe that self-care is the lifeblood to our success in our personal life and in our professional life. And when you do take time to, you know, prioritize yourself, taking care of yourself the best you can, not only do you get the best of you, but so does everyone and everything else in your life. So that's why self-care to me should be the number one priority on your list, because again, you take care of you really well, everyone else is going to benefit from that. Everything that you do, everything that you say, every, everyone that you come into contact with, your children, your, you know, your, your significant other, the people, you know, your family, your, your extended family, your friends, your community, they get the best of you because you're taking care of you. And I, and I really am excited to talk about this today. Can you explain what self-care actually means? Sure, absolutely. So as I said, firstly, I believe that it's a lifeblood to our success in life and business. But I, I feel it's it's the intentional practice of us when we nourish and we prioritize ourselves, like our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. It's that intentional, you know, that intentional mindset to like put ourselves in that place. It's it's also recognizing and then addressing those per, the, the personal needs of ourselves so that we're whole, so that we feel good, um, that our cup is full, if you will. And then it's also learning to set boundaries, especially one of the boundaries that I like to talk about is your time, because when you have, you know, your your clarity around the things that you do every day, and that includes in business, but in your, even your own personal life, when you, when you know what you're doing on a day, daily basis, you have, you use your calendar well, you use your time well, and, and that way then you are, um, you're use you're, you're putting those boundaries in place around like, these are my, this is my family time. This is my, 
uh, this is my professional time or this is my uh, networking time. Like you really set, you're, you're very intentional around that. And that's through setting those boundaries on your time. Uh, and I also believe that it, when you are setting boundaries around your personal time, it's allowing yourself to not always be in the doing. Like we forget to just be sometimes to ex- actually celebrate the stuff that we do with our lives, whether it's personal or professional, we're always in the doing of things that we forget to take a pause and like look at all that we've created or all that we've done. So it goes beyond that. It goes beyond just, um, you know, the what people look at as self-care a lot of people look at pampering yourself like the massages the mani pedis you know getting your hair done which is great you know going out to lunch with the girls that's important too because those are like your this community but you're taking care of you you're honoring yourself um but self-care really is about like cultivating you know what i call the essentials uh some of which like the which are the healthy habits that we do like learning to say no uh, taking mental breaks throughout your day so that you're not always working and you're allowing your brain to reset, uh, allowing your nervous system to re- to re- to reset, to, re- to regulate itself. You know, having those hard stops at the end of your day so that you're not always working and you are not, you're allowing yourself to unwind from your day so that you can then next set yourself up for a really good night's sleep because we know rest is important. And if you wake up the next day feeling exhausted, you're not going to have the greatest day. Um, it's learning to be authentic to yourself too, right? Like that's authentic. I know authenticity gets used a lot, but I truly believe that when you take care of you, you start becoming this better version of yourself. That's that authentic person really shines through. And then you're, you're cultivating that life of, you know, your overall health, your happiness and your fulfillment. So that's, uh, that's a little bit of like what, self-care to me means and and it can be in like the, even just the littlest of things even like think about it you're you have family when you cook dinner you're not thinking about oh I'm just gonna like throw something together and just throw it on the table and tell them to eat it you're con you're consciously thinking about the love that you have for your family it goes behind how you prepare the meal and then you're spending time with them that's like a self-care moment there because you you are like leaning into like the love of your family, why you're doing this, you know, what they mean to you. And then you're creating a deeper bond with them as you sit down and you have that meal together. You talk, talk about your day. If it's little kids, you know, I'm sure that must be the, probably one of the funnest conversations to have is with children, you know, who are like little because the things that as children that we would say as children, I mean, I know my mom used to tell me some of the things that I would say and you, and you can laugh at that. And I think it's, it's great because you're creating like these uh, beautiful bonds. Those are self-care moments. So self-care is huge to me. I love it. I love it. It's, you know, one of the things that I used to do, especially when the boys were first born, someone had told me right before that, When the babies are young, when they're within the first three to six months, sometimes longer, that no matter what you do, every day you take a shower. You can stand there for two seconds or you can stand there for 10 minutes, but take a shower. So it feels like you're kind of washing away things and it's your moment to reset. And I wish I could remember who said it to me because I would go back and say a very big thank you. Um, I think that's part of the reason that first year wasn't as crazy as it was the first three months. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's great. I think that some, that was great that someone shared that with you because, you know, it's important, you know, you, you taking care of you is also showing your children, your family, how the importance of taking care of yourself. Yeah. And that, that is something that wasn't necessarily shown to me and my siblings growing up. And I would love to pass that on um, mostly because I, I think it sets you up for success as you're growing up so that we as adults who weren't taught that we don't have to relearn it. We can, we can just know it and it feels a lot more natural and innate. And it's just something that you do. And I, I've always admired, um, families who brought up my friends in very similar ways to that Um, because I I do see the struggles that I go through versus their 
their struggles. And, you know, it's not that life isn't a challenge here and there. It's just the way that things are, are played out the way that we, our roles play in those challenges. Um, it feels very different energetically. So to be able to pass that message on and help somebody else learn that at a younger age versus an older age. Um, that yeah. is, and, and their ripple effect too. Your children are going to have that ripple effect because they've learned this from their mom and that ripple effect of just the people in their community, their own families as they get older and they have families of their own. There's like that bigger ripple effect. You know, it's like that, commercial I, I think it's uh, some kind of shampoo commercial uh, I can't remember I'm dating myself but <laughs> I remember it was like and oh you know like one person and then you tell two friends and they two tell two friends it was this commercial on tv like years ago and it was all about just telling people about this amazing hair product well it's the same thing for self-care when you take care of yourself and that just that energy goes out and it just affects more and more people in a positive way so yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've felt that from the people that were, that were around me who had learned this from their parents. So when, when I went and thought about kids, that was one of the things is I want to be able to teach and pass this part on. So it's not such a struggle later on in life. So what would your top five essentials be to recommend somebody with self-care, not necessarily a mom per se, but busy professional, someone that is just busy in general for whatever reason, what would your top five priorities be? So I, yeah, absolutely. So again, like there's soft, soft self-care, which I kind of talked about with the man, the mani pedis and the massages, the lunches, you know, buying yourself thing, like you're honoring yourself. Um, And that's great. Those are soft. I call them soft self-care. But the essentials are really important. And I think they're not talked about enough. And I kind of talked a little bit about a couple of them, you know, learning to say no, which is really important. Because I think when we're in the doing, sometimes, especially we get excited, we're in the doing of things. And we're saying yes to a lot of things that we think we need right now, or they're part of the process. But, and I, I know as if you're, especially if you're a young entrepreneur, and when I say young, I mean just starting out, or even if someone in business and you're changing your whole dynamics of your business, and now you're like looking at different ways to up level. If you're saying yes to all the pieces in your puzzle, you're not using your time well. This is one of the things that I, which really goes well with like learning how to structure your days. But learning to say no helps, opens you up to being able to like sit back and be more aware of the things that you are saying yes to so that you can then say, okay, well, I know this is part of the the puzzle. It's not now that I need it. So can I give myself permission to say no to it right now? Or, uh, and that's what I say, not right now. So that maybe down the road, if it fits, I can revisit it. But that opens you up to the things that really do align with your life today. And that keeps you, you have more clarity around, you have more focus, you have more energy than you feel more, you feel like you have more purpose. And you're not always trying to be in the doing of things that, you know, of everything all at once. So learning to say no was, my, was you know, really important. The second one was asking for help and then learning to delegate that out because as women, especially too, sometimes I, I know that I've talked to women. It's like, well, if I say some say something like I don't know how to do it, then that does that negate what I'm what I'm already doing? Does that make me look that I'm not competent? And it's like that's that's not. It's a sign of strength to be able to ask for help. You know, especially if you don't know something, it's better to to ask them to sit there and spin your wheels. And then wasting time because time again is very precious. It always comes back to time. It's something we can't get back because never will we spend the same, even though we have maybe the same tasks in a day, we'll never spend them the same way because life doesn't work that way. It's not on autopilot where it's like, this is the clock and it the exact second of the exact minute of the exact hour. It doesn't happen that way, you know, to break it down that way. So learning to ask for help and then maybe possibly even delegating it out to someone else frees you up and it allows you to expand and be able to like look for and maybe even receive from other people great ideas that you might not have thought of yourself when you allow other people in because we all want to help each other. But sometimes if we don't, we're not given that opportunity 
we're missing out on helping someone and that person's missing out on helping someone. And, and so it's, it's, it's really good to be able to adopt that. The third one, as I talked about, which I think is one of the most important ones is taking mental breaks, because if you're always working, you're not allowing yourself to rest, like your brain to rest. And I know just from personal experience of being in law for over four decades that um, when I was working full time, I could not, I, I just was so miserable and so stressed. I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't eating well. I, my marriage wasn't uh, doing great because I really didn't have time. I was so exhausted by the end of the day. I didn't want to do anything. I had no social life. So learning, and, and that is just, that was just because all that I that encompassed my life was work. And I had to learn how to, one of the things I did was I took back my time. And that was, I actually said to them, I can't work for you full time, but I can work for you in a different capacity. Now, maybe that's, maybe that's not for everyone, but it's, if that's not for you and you are in a, in a full-time position, still taking those mental breaks is going to be healthier for you because you'll do a better job. You'll be, have more focus, more energy when you allow yourself to reset and go back, go, go get back at it. The fourth one was having that hard stop to the day, which I mentioned, really important. Um, for me, as an example, I stop everything at seven o'clock, meaning I do not, for most of the time, there's no social media, no emails, no voicemails. I'm not checking text messages. I'm not having client calls or meetings or anything like that. At 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm done. It usually actually is an hour earlier. It just depends. Like if I have something between six and seven, great. But if I don't, six o'clock is my hard stop. And that means I can unwind from the day. I spend time with my husband. You know, it's just the two of us, but I spend quality time with him. We've been married now over 27 years. And that's a lot of the reason why we're things are better is because now I'm intentionally looking at self-care as a priority for me. And then the last one is, you know, I, I look at it as my GPS, which I call God's plan for success for my life. And I truly believe that um, I've been given, I've been given gifts and a purpose and I don't do this on my own. I look for uh, help, you know, I look to him for guidance, but I also look to other people in my community as well. You know, he wants me also to be able to bring people like yourself into my into my realm, so that I can, you know, turn to you for for whatever that looks like. You know, the holistic holistic wellness is really important, and so I I surround myself like that with people like that. So my top five is it's really important. Now there's other essentials of self-care that I think are really important. Um, and, uh, and I think it's just, you know, there's a lot, I mean, I have like a guide that I created that goes through them, but I think it's really these top five are important to help you managing your time. Um, for me, I really do truly believe that there is freedom in structure. I know people think of the word structure and it's like, it's, it's uh, limiting, but to me, there's, when I structure my days, uh, do my calendar, my Google calendar, and then my Google Docs calendar. Uh, well, just my Google Docs form. I create, I, I put on my form all of my set tasks. They're also in my calendar, but I put it on my form. And what this does for me, and it's just a mind thing, but it shows me a lot of white space in my day, which then is like, it's like a calming effect because then I can see, oh, I'm not always doing things. I actually have time to go for my walk, to exercise, to listen to my podcast, to take time to just relax, maybe to take some time to meditate, journal, whatever that looks like. But I really truly believe that a lot of this comes, all of these things kind of come back to the whole, um, that, that whole thing around time. Like when you are looking after yourself through your time, like really setting boundaries around with how you, what you say yes to, asking for that help, taking those breaks, having that hard stop, you know, having that plan for your success, that really is around your time and you'll use it well. I love that. I love that. And I, I love you saying hard stop. That was a very hard lesson for me to learn. Before the boys, I felt like I didn't have a reason to do a hard stop. And now there's no excuse. I have to leave at a certain time to go pick them up from school or from daycare. They're too young. Um, but that means I'm done. <laughs> 
I have no, no other excuses. And they're at an age now where if you're on your phone all the time or you're on the computer or you're doing something else, they want to be involved. So you can't get anything done anyway. Um, and I've, I've realized, I know that's something that you and I had talked about, but I, I realized um, before I met you, so it was interesting that you and I had met and talked about that. I realized that that is it's most definitely self-care. It's most definitely something that is very respectful to me, to the family and, and to time. It kind of leads into, you know, talking a little bit about burnout because, you know, I don't know what it's like to have one child at a time or to have them spread out, you know, a couple of years. Having the twins, there have been definitely moments where both my husband and I have hit burnout. We're up in Dallas and our family is not here. It's just us and friends, you know? Um, so we don't have, you know, we can't call grandma if things fall apart. We have to rely on each other. Everybody else is at least four hours away. And burnout has most definitely been a topic that we've talked about, talked about a lot, managing our schedule, being respectful of us, um, that's been that's been pretty crucial for us is that aspect um and i started using have you heard of the pom pomodoro i believe yes started using one of those timers and it has made a tremendous difference because like yourself when i see empty holes in my calendar it it calms me it's not necessarily that there's nothing that has to happen during that time, but there's, you know, working out is crucial to your, to your self-care, making sure you can make meals and put your love in it, not just for your family, but for yourself. Yeah, you know? I totally agree with that. And I think too, having a, t like being consciously aware of how you use your time, especially with the timers, it helps you to see what you spend your time on. You know, people have asked, I'm sure this has probably been asked of you, it's been asked of me many times, like, how much time do you spend on X, Y, and Z? And if you don't monitor that, how are you going to effectively know? And so when people start to monitor it, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I actually spend really only 10 minutes posting on social media, but I spend two hours scrolling social media when they thought it was opposite. So it's really becoming mindful. And you're right. Burnout is, I believe it's on the rise. In fact, I was actually, I'm just going to open up my, my uh, Chrome. Uh, there was a, an article written by BBC and they wrote, they did an actual, uh, there was a survey done in February of this past of this year of 10,243 global workers by US think tank future forum and 40 42% reported burnout and it's the highest figure since May of 2021 mm -hmm. so when you look at that just as just that number alone and then you think about if if you're a woman who's in business and you're thinking okay I have deadlines. I've got, I, for example, you might have a program that you're getting ready to release or a workshop or something. And you think, okay, I, I kind of reverse engineered it all the way back to the beginning. Uh, and, but then there's no buffer time. I really feel like there should be a little bit of buffer time in, in that planning because again, like does not show up like saying, okay, oh, you've got a plan. Oh, great. Then I'm going to let your plan go as planned. And it doesn't happen that way. So um, when you have that buffer in place, it allows you then to feel a little bit less pressured. But when you don't and you start getting closer, life has gotten in the way. It's disrupted some of your plans a little bit along the way. And you start getting frantic because now you're running out of time. That's when a lot of women that I've talked to will start pushing through. In fact, I, I just recently did, I do self-care assessments. And one of the women that I recently spoke with, uh, you know, she has her own business. And she told me that her, the way she approaches is that she'll push through. She isn't, she's not really, she says she's conscious to take mental breaks, but if she has a deadline, she'll push through and then she'll notice it. So as an example, you could be working on something and you're thinking, okay, it's five more minutes, just five more minutes. 
And then all of a sudden you look up and you've been working on something for like three hours and your brain is fried that, and then you try to like take those breaks, but you find yourself feeling like, Oh, I'm, you don't feel like doing anything because then it can lead to procrastination, not feeling like doing anything less motivated because you're tired. You've, you've made your, your brain is tired. Your body is tired. You feel exhausted mentally. And so it's like learning to like really be able to recognize that. And I think, you know, that's why it's important to recognize that burnout truly is on the rise. Uh, and when you start seeing that numbers are, are starting to like double, you know, just, it, just because as like, let's just go back for a second. I remember as a young girl in, in just in high school still, and remembering there was a guy going around talking about how um, he felt like in 20 years from now, the work schedule is going to be cut in half. People are not going to work as long. They're going to spend more time with family. And, and it's really kind of feels like it's the opposite that hours have like increased and especially if you're an entrepreneur and you don't know how to structure your day, you could be working from seven until like 11 at night. And now you're really pushing the envelope, not taking care of yourself. And so, and then of course, family time, you were mentioning like you have your little kids, they want to be involved. You know, a friend of mine recently, we talked about it, that her son had said to her one day, mommy, can you put your phone down? And he was, he's a little boy, like he's still very young. He's, he's uh, in his early, uh, you know, single digit. Um, and she was like, oh, right. And then her husband, the same thing, you know, can't talk to you because you're on the phone. You're always in the doing. And so learning to like recognize that those are things that if you don't, especially if you are busy and you don't learn to say no or have that hard stop or ask for help maybe even delegating out some of the things that you're doing, making sure you're saying yes to the right things and you're not all over the map. Um, it's not going to help you and you could end up in burnout. So, you know, I've been there multiple times. So I'm speaking of, from experience. And when I finally, it was like, it finally clicked, like I have to do something about this or I'm constantly going to suffer from it. Right. Right. It's, it's so funny hearing you talk and I'm sure I'm not alone in this and you just want to sit there and go, yep. Mm -hmm, yep. Yep. That's me. Yeah. That too. And it's, it's mostly because a lot of us, especially with 2020, a lot of us have been here. We might have very different lives, but we've all been in a place where we're either on the verge of burnout or we've hit burnout. And now we're sitting on the couch, not, not able to move like you're you're mentioning you know not being productive in any way shape or form because we just don't have the motivation the energy to do so yeah and it's most definitely an issue um now you had mentioned that you have something coming up that talks about now yes so i have um i have a workshop which is going to be an interactive live workshop. Um, it will be um, around burnout. And it's really going to, I'm going to talk about four stages of burnout. Uh, I'm going to talk about how, you know, there's there's like that honeymoon stage where you feel like you are excited about life, that you're excited about the things that you're doing. And, um, and you end up like maybe pushing through like as a lot of us will do when we're excited about the things that we're working on. And so we'll, we'll, we'll push through um, and we're passionate about it. And we're thinking like, this is great, but then, you know, and that's this first stage, but then the second stage is that's when stress starts to come in. Right. And we start losing our enthusiasm about it. We get those mild symptoms, like feeling tired or maybe unfulfilled with what we're doing Maybe we are denying and uh, the signs uh, that burnout is really happening to us because we're thinking, no, no, it's just because I know I have so much to do and I'm stressed about it, but it's really a sign of burnout. And then you've got that chronic stress and burnout where you start feeling the effects of it on your body, right? You start emotionally feeling emotionally exhausted. You're overwhelmed and maybe even wanting to like disappear. Like I, I, this is one of the stages that I found really scary to be in because I've been here many times. And when I would get to this place, I wouldn't ask for help. I wouldn't reach out to my community and say, look, I'm in this place. I don't feel good about my life. 
Um, I'm really overwhelmed. I'm tired all the time. And, uh, and I wouldn't ask anyone. And so it took really going through my own self-development journey and having really good friends and a good community of people that I can lean on for support that help me to understand that if I get here and it's not like it'll never happen again because it's happened to me even recently where I was in the doing of things and I recognized it but you become self-aware and so I understood that I'm getting to this point where I need to reach out and ask for help. I need to tell them this is how what I'm doing and how I'm feeling and being able to have them just to say, you know, you've been here before, you know, the signs, you know what to do and just having the reminder. And then the last stage is that we were talking that I'm going to talk about is the crisis and burnout. And that's where it can be extremely challenging because you could have physical and Health, mental health problems, you know, that they become more severe. It impacts your life. You might even feel like withdrawn from your family, you know, so you have children. I can't imagine you would want to get to the crisis and burnout stage and then have your children, you know, wanting to have mommy time and you just don't, you just can't. Like you're at that place where you just can't. And this is where you really do need to like lean on people. And I think that a lot of the time, when it comes to asking for help, I know that a lot of my friends, a lot of people that I know, women that I've talked to, this, the hardest part to, uh, for them is to ask for help because that makes them feel like they look weak, that they, um, they look like they're not competent in what they're doing. They're, and they, and they feel like, oh, you know, like if I ask for help, someone's, they're going to think that, okay, I'm an imposter at what I do. When in fact, it's more a sign of strength, as well as like when you have, um, if you do reach that burnout stage and you then, you might want to quit, like, you know, that whole thing, quit what you love. I mean, can you imagine quitting what you love to do? I've, I've, I've done that. I've been at that place a few times. So when I say to you that self-care to me is a vital part of my life is because I've gone through these stages and now I fully get it that if I didn't wake up that I was going to stop doing what I love and so you know that's why you know the 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 workshop is going to be August 17th it's interactive um and it will be at 2 p.m eastern and, uh, yeah, so it, I definitely would love, you know, if you, I believe truly that, um, when you look at the signs of burnout and start understanding like where you are at and you're, you become more self-aware, it will help you create that healthier work-life balance. I, I truly believe there is a balance, uh, that it's just, you know, being able to, it comes down to like structuring your time, having, you know, that focus and energy taking care of you. And then, you know, especially women who might feel that they have experienced burnout or maybe they're on the verge of burnout, this could be, will be really helpful so that they can see, like they're, you know, see the gaps that they're not seeing because sometimes someone else just needs to point it out. Like, this is the things that you're doing that if you just look like, oh, I didn't even realize that I'm doing this to myself, you know, that I can just like, if I just become, you know, consciously aware that, all I have to do is take those breaks, is ask for help, is have that hard stop to the end of my day, is making sure that I take care of myself also with what I eat, you know, hydrating well, all of these things around self-care, that I'll, I'll live a much more joyful life. Um, and so that's why, you know, that's why I decided to have this workshop, because I felt it was really important, especially with the rise there, there being such a rise in burnout across, you know, across our nation. I can imagine, I didn't even look at statistics worldwide, but, you know, I'm sure it's, we're looking at a global thing that's happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think your timing is, is perfect on that. Not just for, just for the world in general, but um, right about that time is when a lot of families start, they phase away from vacations. I get a lot of comments, a lot of a lot of phone calls, a lot of private conversations about that transition from vacation to real life, you know. And and for me, it's more about uh, it's the nutrition side and and activity and motivation things like that from food. Um, so it's I love your timing on that. It 
It's definitely spot on for the part of the year, the time of the year when a lot of the people that I work with are in transition and they're on the verge of that post vacation back to reality burnout where the things that they did before vacation are now catching up to them. (laughs) And I think people become frantic too, because now we're entering the last quarter almost of the year. Like we're finishing out a quarter and then we're going to be starting a brand new quarter in like September. It's not too long, long from now. And, um, what happens is that all of a sudden you start looking at your goals that you'd set and you're like, Oh gosh, I'm not that close. I've only got three months. And you start to freak out and then you start to be in the doing. So what happens you're in the doing and it's like five more minutes, five more minutes. And then you're not taking care of yourself. It's, it's more, it's crucial to, to take care of you. Cause again, it's you take care of you and you'll feel better. You'll, you'll feel better than you'll be able to that be that better person. You'll be able to do more and have more fun and also have more time to create those deeper level bonds with the people who are important to you in life, uh, especially your family. Using your time, it all comes back to how do you how do you structure your time for you? You know, especially when and when you when you look at it as prioritize self care. That way, you can then have the best you know, best life, you know, professionally and personally. Thank you for mentioning your workshop. I'll make sure that we put a link to it and details inside the show notes so everybody can access it easily. And it's right there. Um, Is there any, let me see, how do I want to phrase this? Do you have a top or maybe the top two pieces of advice we can send everybody away with? Yeah. So let's think what's the best advice. I would think that really my top advice to you is to prioritize yourself. Um, It's not selfish. It is essential to take care of you. Uh, Just like they say when a lot of people will, will, you know, talk about how you're on an airplane and when they give you the instructions about your, the masks that if they ever fell down, they came down in front of you, that you're supposed to secure your mask first, because that way then you are taken care of and you can then uh, take care of somebody else more efficiently. But if you're flailing all over the place, trying to put the mask on everyone else and you're panicking, you're not doing any, you're not doing yourself a good service and you're not doing them a good service. In fact, who knows if you'll ever get the masks on. Uh, I really think it's just important to really look at your life. Like what's important to you? Who do you have a family? Maybe you aren't a mom. Maybe you don't have children. Like you're like me, you don't have children, but you still have a life. And do you want to be able to like, look back on your life as a life where you took care of you, you lived with a lot of joy and gratitude and you can, and you anchored in a lot of those, what I call celebration memories from being present in your day and, and looking at how great it, you know, your life is, uh, has been and all the things that you did, taking those chances, uh, but also being intentional around that. Or did you want to like live to what the dates that you're living today that maybe, and it doesn't mean that your life is horrible, but maybe there's something that you do want to change, but you're not willing to, you're, you're afraid to, you know, fear is always going to be there. But I, I think it would be like, living Groundhog Day over and over again. Uh, at some point, you're not, it's going to become that day where it's, you don't even take notice of anything anymore. So it's being, I guess, going, going deeper is being intentional about your days, enjoying and being present in every moment of your day, enjoying, like you say, your children are not going to be young forever. They're going to want to spend time with you now. And maybe when they're 15, they're going to be wanting to spend time with their friends. So there's a difference there too, right? But so being intentional daily, uh, uh, being present in your day, uh, maybe even ending your day with a gratitude journal. You know, I do that. I, I have five things that I write different every day, what I'm grateful for. And then again, also just like taking that long-term view back from when you're sitting in your rocking chair and talking about the good old days. Are they going to be the good old days or are they going to be the, the days where you didn't take those, you know, you didn't live your life. You didn't take care of you. 
and maybe you're not health wise, you're not good, maybe you're not doing well, you know, because you didn't take care of the, the nutrition side to it. Um, and because because they go hand in hand, like self care is is not just about emotions. It's not about the, the self awareness. It's not just about self love. It really that, it all is all of that. But the it's mind, body, soul. And when I say that, it's taking care of your body through nutrition, through hydration, and, which is not just your body, but your brain. By the way, your brain needs it, and then your your mind. Uh, so your your mind as far as like the emotional part and taking care of that and uh you know filling your mind with good things you know that community part uh uh when it comes to like the soul the community part surrounding yourself with people that are really good that really pour into your life and that you do do the same for them and then also having something bigger than yourself to to believe in like for me I believe in God I believe he has a purpose for my life and that's my what what I choose to believe uh, for for me. And so finding those things and having a, a well rounded uh, recipe is going to help you to enjoy your life daily. But make sure that it's self care focused in all aspects of your life. And it, uh, I guess the last thing that I would want to say is there is no one one size fits all to self care. It has to fit your lifestyle. So, like I said, I'm not a mom. Uh, I don't have children, so I might have more time than you, and I can structure my day better than you. Uh, sorry, someone's cutting the grass outside my home here, so sorry about that. Um, but my my self care might look different than yours, and that's okay. And you might have time today to have an hour up to yourself, and tomorrow you only have ten minutes, and that's okay. But sprinkle out throughout the day self-care moments so that you are taking care of you all the time, not just morning routine, evening routine, but all of the time. And you'll live that that joyful life that you're looking to, to live. That's so I hope that helps. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm always talking about how healthcare in general has to fit you. Everybody is is different. So just like healthcare, self-care has to fit you. I love that. I think that is, I think that's an absolutely fabulous place to, to end on. I like that message. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. I will most definitely put your contact information out. Um, and I know you have a YouTube channel as well. And so, yeah, so I will make sure everyone knows exactly how to find you. Um, because I, Everything that we've talked about today really reiterates some things that we've talked about over the years, just with clients and with the communities um, that follow me. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Um, I look forward to actually collabing with you more in the future. I'm excited for, for everything coming up and I'm excited for your workshop. So. I will definitely see you on August 17th and everybody else listening. I highly recommend you get in there as well. So thank you for joining us. Cheers, you guys.